I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty one Ford Mustang Mach One with launch control. Oh, yes! This pulls so hard. Twenty twenty one Lexus RCF Track Edition with launch control. Ease it in and oh. Finally got a good launch there. And we're comparing these because they're both five liter V8 track focused coupes. So let's get to the horsepower and torque. The Mach 1 has 480 horsepower and 420 pound feet of torque from that five liter V8. And the Lexus has 472 horsepower and 395 pound feet of torque from a five liter V8. And the Mach 1 is all new for 2021. So if you want an in-depth look at this car, we did an individual review on this already. So definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell if you missed that video. And we've also compared this RCF to an M3 and taken it on the track. So you might want to watch that video too. So let's focus on why we have these two cars together right now. I've got a six speed manual, you have an eight speed auto, but that doesn't really matter because these are the track focused versions of both cars. And you can get an automatic in that Mach 1, but you cannot get a manual in this Lexus. Yeah, so it does kind of matter because this six speed is actually borrowed from the Shelby GT350, which you can't buy anymore. And it is the best manual transmission I can remember using in a very long time. And this eight speed transmission in this Lexus does feel a little ancient. Controlling it with the paddles is pretty good, but not perfect. I definitely prefer that. It's like the most perfect manual transmission for a Mustang. So let's get to all the similarities and differences with these two, starting with the engine bays. Let's see what they look like. Yuri, which one do you like better? Obviously the Lexus, it's got blue and then the Mach 1 is kind of just chill, but it's got that huge intake. Yeah, that open element cone filter is what everyone would put on this anyways. Okay, so points to the Lexus. And then if we go to the hoods, I've got the full carbon fiber hood with some vents up there. You've got a cool graphic on your Mach 1 hood, but you don't have the shaker. Yeah, the Mach 1 has a really cool graphic. It does suck that it doesn't have a shaker hood. So I think points for the RCF, considering how cool and lightweight that hood is. Front lips, I think you've got a little bit more front lip on that Mustang, but mine's carbon fiber. Who gets the points? The size of the lip on the Mach 1, I think definitely should get points on this one. Totally agree. Okay, now I wanna to move to the very back and talk about wings, because I've got a fixed wing on the RCF, but you've got a cool double wing with a track attachment on the Mach 1. Yeah, so on this Mach 1, there's an optional gurney flap, which we have attached naturally, even though you're supposed to use it on the track. I think it looks really cool with it on. But I mean, we have a carbon fiber F in the carbon fiber pattern on the Lexus, so we gotta give them points. Yeah, that's kind of points for the Lexus. And now let's talk about these exhausts, which is, I'd say, the piece de resistance of both of these. And I think the Mustang just sounds and looks a little bit better. It sounds more Mustangy, but I think the RCF has a really cool tone that you don't really hear very often. So let's take a listen to the outside. My God, that sounded good. Okay, but the Mustang kind of wins because it already has valved exhaust from the factory and it's got the good neighbor mode and everything. So yeah, it wins, but Lexus is up there too. However, the Lexus does have a titanium exhaust and stacked quads. I know, and the Mustang's got really real double dual exhaust too. I think the Lexus just beats it for the look of the tips. For the look of the tips maybe, but I kind of give it, I gotta give it a tie. Okay, wheels. 100%, this one's going to the Mach 1. These wheels are so cool looking, and the fact that we have 11 inch wide wheels out back is insane. No question, Mach 1 wins. The wheels actually look too small on the Lexus. But what would be the Continental recommended tire for these five liter V8s? The Extreme Contact Sport. How about brakes and brake calipers? I love that you've got orange matching the orange stripes on the Mach 1, but these are carbon ceramics on the RCF. They're both made by Brembo. Although you do have carbon ceramics, I don't on the Mustang. I think there's really no difference in stopping power on the streets at least. But who's got the cooler brakes? I don't really know. I think you, you gotta give it to the carbons. Cause they match the interior of this. <laughs> and, and the fact that they're so expensive cause they're part of the track package. And how about paint colors real quick? On the Mach 1, you have a jet inspired color that also matches the word Mach. Yeah, well, Mach 1 fighter jet, this is fighter jet gray. I think I, I gotta give it to the Mustang. 100%. Damn, this, this is pretty even, but the Mustang's racking up a couple more points here and there. Headlights and taillights. I think the headlights on the Lexus are much better because you can't have 
just the daytime running lights on the Mustang, but you got sequential tail lights on the Mustang, which destroys this Lexus. Yeah, so tail lights, the Mustang wins, headlights, the Lexus wins. <laughs> and we're gonna keep going with these similarities and differences, but I think we owe the audience a little rip. Second gear pull, ready? Ready. Ooh, pretty, pretty evenly, pretty evenly matched. matched, yeah, yeah. I think you had a little bit of pull on me, even though this has slightly more horsepower, barely. You need a power shift, like that old man in that YouTube video, and I need to just like keep it in auto and go quick. And I get the advantage because the automatic transmission's way quicker. I guess you get the advantage, but this is just way more of a joy to use. This is just, I love driving this car thanks to this transmission. And on that pull and power wise, the Mustang just feels way more raw, probably due to that exhaust sound, but the overall feel of driving this is totally different. That thing just feels so refined in comparison. And another looks thing, uh, the badges, F or Mach 1, which one is cooler? I think Mach 1. I don't know, the heritage throwback for the Mach 1 is definitely cool, but like that F font is really, really cool. Mach 1 hasn't been bastardized yet like the F logo has. Oh, uh, whoa, 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 Mach E. Ooh, I think that's a tie then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we gotta give a die for the hockey. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's touch on some of the mechanical differences and similarities before we get to Cliche Corner, switch it up, launch it, and decide our winner. So the real mechanical stuff, we actually have mechanical differentials out back, so we have limited slips, and I find the one in the Mustang just wants to put the power down way more than the one in that Lexus. That Lexus just wants to slide all the time. Might be from the size of the tires though. Potentially, these are 315 uh, steamrollers, as I love to call them. Okay, what about comfort with suspension? So we're approaching the one bump in the road, I am in my stiffest suspension. And I'm in track mode on the Mach 1. And... Oh, that was a joy in this one. It wasn't that bad in this Lexus, but you can soften it up with your modes. Yeah, that Lexus is way stiffer in the sport mode, but the Mustang has Magna Ride, and I find it to be way more comfortable in every mode. But it's not deal breaker stiffness for daily driving in the RCF. It is fine. It is totally fine because they gave you the adaptive suspension that lets you put into normal mode. But I have been driving it in the Sport S Plus mode because I do want the cool gauges, and I have been fine with that, but maybe my tolerance for comfort is different. Maybe my back has a little bit more health than yours does. And mechanically, compared to their non-track versions, they also have increased cooling as well. Yeah, so they'll be a lot better on track days. Yeah, because the Mach 1 borrows a lot of parts from the Shelby GT350 and even the Shelby GT500, whereas that RCF has like bespoke parts, not borrowed from anything, just made for that car. Okay, so let's scoot our way down to Cliche Corner and then figure it out. So now that we're at the S's at Cliche Corner, man, this Mustang just feels like not a Mustang. It feels like a sports car. And this RCF feels so flat and composed through here. And we did drive it on the track and it did kill on the track. Well, it kind of felt like it might kill you at any point too. I mean, it was ready to slide, but it was also very controllable. This Mustang just wants to grip though. It's actually unreal. And the steering is just heavy enough that you still enjoy it and still feel what the wheels are doing. Yeah, this RCF wants to slide a little bit. <laughs> so does the Mustang. You can get it to grip the whole way through and it just makes it like more challenging while driving and more rewarding. And the Mustang can slide if you wanted to, you just literally throttle control it and turn off the traction. And I feel like that Mustang is a lot more controllable than a traditional five liter Mustang, but let's switch drivers, launch it up, cliche it out and find out. Sounds good. I'm gonna try and get a good launch out of that RCF. Good luck. No, I'm gonna need it. Visor test, three, two, one. <laughs> Pull back. Drive Sport S Plus, traction off, pressing launch, and here we go. Come on, ah, screwed it up. Launch, here we go, yes. Oh, there we go, no, burnout. It's so hard to get a good launch in this car. Four thousand, launch control. God damn, shifting this thing is like the best thing to shift. And launching that Mach 1 is so easy, it's so consistent, just puts down the power unlike any other Mustang we've driven. Yeah, that RCF has a whole lot of tricks. You need to start with a little bit of throttle and then you can ease it in while in launch and even then it still kind of screws up. But, cliche corner time. And I'm gonna use my auto rev matching to get a nice automatic heel-toe downshift into cliche. 
and downshift using these paddles. A little slow, but still good. And it just wants to slide. Holy, there's no grip here. And this feels like a total track weapon. And I don't like to use that word, but this Mach 1 definitely is. <laughs> yeah, this thing's pretty fun. I feel like this Mach 1 feels a lot more like that ZL1 1LE Camaro that we drove last year. Yeah, just way less power. And this RCF is just so freaking crazy to drive because it just wants to slide the back end out. That's all it ever wants to do. It doesn't want to put power down ever. <laughs> it's definitely difficult to control. But it makes it fun as well. And I just want to say again, this manual transmission completely changes this five liter Mustang. It is the best transmission that you could ever bolt to this motor. Yeah, and they even had a better engine which was bolted to that transmission in the GT350, but that 5.2 flat plane crank V8 just did not live on. But that thing bolted to that is just, it's a magnificent driving experience for daily driving. Yeah, we missed the boat on the Shelby GT350 and 350R, but hopefully we can pick one up from the Heritage Fleet of Ford in 10 years and review it. Okay, train track test in the Lexus and stiff. Oh yeah, it's stiff. Uh, Camaro's pretty all right in track mode. Oh yeah, sick Camaro, bro. Uh, Mustang's pretty good in the... <laughs> Whatever, man. Honestly, you know how many cars we drive? It, 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 it reminds me of the Camaro. Because <laughs> it's like the same car. And briefly on all the interior stuff, the Lexus has a much nicer interior. It's all red, really great materials compared to this plain black plasticky Mustang. But the Mustang does have a Mach 1 badge on the dash. And the infotainment in the Lexus is definitely worse than the one in the Mustang, but we do have Apple CarPlay in here, but in the Mustang we have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay with Sync 3. And the Mustang is a traditional one with a touch screen, but the Lexus is still a touchpad, trackpad kind of thing. And then moving on to the gauges, we've got really cool customizable gauges in the Mustang with different colors and different modes. How about the Lexus? The Lexus is a couple different modes, but it's definitely not as customizable as that Mustang. I'm gonna give points to the gauge cluster in the Lexus. How about seats and seat room in both of these? I'm actually gonna give the point to the Mustang for the gauge cluster, but talking about the seats, I'm definitely giving the points to this Lexus. These seats are so comfortable. Yeah, hands down, especially with that like material too and color. It's, it's so nice. And then back seat room, I have just enough room at five foot eight and a half ish in the RCF. Mustang, not so much. Yeah, and I don't have any room in either one, so it kind of doesn't really matter for me. And as for audio systems in both of them, they're both very good. I think the Mustang's got more bassiness to it, but the Lexus is clearer. Hey Yuri, the only audio I need is the one from this 5 liter V8. Yeah. Hey Jacob, the only audio I need is from this 5 liter V8. Uh, you know what, I'm going to change what I said and the only audio I need is from that 5 liter V8. <laughs> so interior, who gets the win? I think we got to give it to the Lexus, like this is just a quality interior. Yeah, and especially that weird red carbon fiber too. So with everything pretty much out of the way and all the specifics buried in our solo reviews of both, I think it's time we get to the price. Well, let's start with that Mach 1 first. It starts at $65,500. Canadian. And it's optioned out to $75,900. And then how about that Lexus? This Lexus starts at $85,000. Canadian. And it's optioned out to $120,000, almost twice as much as that car. Okay, but that's a limited edition. There's four in Canada for this year. It's pretty much for rich people who want like fun Lexuses that aren't like good production cars. Yeah, the fact that there's only four of these in Canada and two of them at the time of filming this have already been sold. There's only two available. There's definitely points in that because that's gonna be worth a lot down the road. And while that Mach 1 is new, it's not exactly that limited. It's kind of like the bullet. And then as for rarity and price aside, have you picked your choice? Which one you would like more? <sighs> After spending multiple days driving both of these, ripping back and forth, I'm just having way more fun in that Mach 1. So I gotta give the win to that Mach 1. You know, as much as I love that RCF because we got to drift it on the track and I was sliding coast to coast and I had a great time with it, it's easy because it's automatic. Being in this Mustang doesn't feel like a normal Mustang, and I also got to give the win to the Mach 1. Damn, so we actually agree on this. How could I disagree? This is the transmission. This transmission changes everything, 100%. The transmission and the soundtrack from that. If this had a louder, yes, it has a titanium exhaust. If this had a louder exhaust, I'd be more inclined to pick this, but that transmission, you're right. Man, they, they did such a good job by just snooping that GT350 transmission and just putting it in there. But looks wise and everything else, that Lexus for me, I think that's the, the coolest thing. Seeing that sitting in my driver with that big dumb wing is totally awesome. 
It's, it's just this transmission. You know what though? If this was a 10 speed auto and not a manual, I would probably go with the RCF. I probably might as well. Oh, okay. So let us know what you guys think. Which one gets the win in your books? Are we totally wrong or are we totally right? And check out all these other comparisons that we do with a lot of other cool cars that are equally matched, but also slightly weird.